Good morning. Today I'm going to go over continental drift and specifically the mechanisms that support this idea of continental drift. Because um, continental drift was just the fact that we, it appeared that the continents had moved and changed places, but scientists early on didn't know why that was happening. Um, so now we're starting to collect evidence. It's about, it's, it's, it's in the early 50s. This is um, geologist Marie Thor or Tharp. And what she did was she collected a bunch of data. So this is normal, especially with modern instruments. It's easy to collect a whole bunch of data, but the data by itself doesn't tell you anything. So it's what you do with the data. So anyway, she gathered all of this sonar data from two ships that had previously gone around the world um, and taken sonar soundings of the ocean floor. And it, again, it was all a bunch of raw data, so nobody knew what it meant until you started to put it together. And that's what uh, Marie was doing. So she put all this work together, which was very difficult, a uh, uh, very arduous task. And Eventually, she comes up with this uh, map of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean floor. So we've got the North America over here, we've got Europe over here, and this is all the ocean floor of the Atlantic. So this is the first detailed map which she hand drew, by the way. Um, she only hand drew it once she was able to go through all the data and align it properly, uh, showing the different elevation changes on the seafloor of the Atlantic. And what she saw was this huge underwater mountain chain. Now the question was, why is there this big mountain chain on the ocean floor? So, more research was done. And what we started to learn was that these mountain ranges under the water were caused by a couple of geologic processes. First of all, we have magma that's rising up from the core breaking through the crust of the earth, so the hard surface of the earth. Um, and that rising magma forces its way in to these cracks in the middle of the ocean, and it creates new ocean floor. Now, at the same time of the magma coming up, we also get something else going on, and that is the um, plate. The, the plate on either side of this ridge, going either this way or this way, is being pulled down into the earth. And it's literally just being pulled by gravity because it has a different density than this other plate. So here's a continental plate. It has a lower density, so it stays on top. And this plate here has a higher density and it sinks down. So gravity pulls it down higher density, which means it's going to move its way underneath this lower density plate. So the plate is pulling apart on either side and magma is coming up to fill in those cracks. We can see this when we look at age of the ocean floor. This is a very slow process. And what we see when we look at the rocks of the ocean floor, and we can date the rocks and tell how old they are, is that as you move away from the mid-ocean ridge, these, this mountain range where the new magma is coming up, 
As you move away from that, um, you find that the age of the rocks increase the further away you get from that mid-ocean ridge. And the oldest rock is the rock that's furthest away from that ridge before it gets taken back down into the earth here. So our oldest rock is right along this edge of where the ocean meets the continent. But there's other evidence. As in most of the cases of scientific discoveries, major scientific discoveries, there's multiple things that point to the same uh, conclusion. In this case, our second piece of evidence comes from looking at how minerals line up in the rock of the ocean floor. And what this means, or what we see, are these bands of alternating magnetic polarity. So I'm gonna have to explain that one a little bit. And we get these reversals. Um, the reason we're gonna get these reversals is Earth's north and south pole periodically switch and, and they change. This happens over the course of hundreds of, or I mean tens of thousands of years. It's not always the same, but it, they flip-flop. And when that happens, you've get, you get these bands of uh, these minerals pointing in one direction or the other. For instance, this band here, this dark orange band, uh, might be pointing north. All, the, all of them might be pointing north, where this lighter band here would be, all the minerals there would be pointing the opposite direction and the bands just go all the way across the ocean floor, alternating north, south, north, south, north, south. And that's because they're aligning the minerals when they first come out and you, you have your magma. That magma is liquid rock. And so the minerals within the magma can move until that rock cools, right, and becomes solid. Well, they move and align with Earth's magnetic field, just like a compass would do. They're doing the same thing that a compass. They're slightly magnetic. They will change their orientation to line up with Earth's magnetic field. Um, and then once the magma solidifies, they're stuck in place. So we can see this patterning across the whole ocean floor. This is just another piece of evidence that backs up this idea of seafloor spreading. All right, thank you very much.